VO3 is generating crazy ads that are going completely viral lately. Check these out. Every one of these was done with JSON prompting, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in this video. But stick around, because at the end I'm going to tell you the real truth behind generating these VO3 ads, and it turned out wildly different, so let's get straight into it. So first things first, what is JSON prompting? Now it's nothing groundbreaking, it's been around for a couple of months. It's just a structured way of explaining to the AI video generation model what the output is going to be. The only difference is how we're formatting it into that JSON output. Think of it as like a shot list for a director versus a really long scene instruction. Remember, we're not giving it poetry, we're giving it an instruction to get an output. Within it, we want to include some of the key details to make sure that we're getting the output that we want. So for example, we want to include the subject, the action, the environment and context, the camera description, the style and tone of that video, the lighting and atmosphere, as well as any of the other points around temporal control. So for example, from the IKEA ad you saw a little bit earlier on, this is the exact prompt that that user had generated to get the output. So as you can see here, we're giving it some really clear information on the base style, the aspect ratio we want it in, some description around the room style, the camera setup, as well as some of the key elements that they wanted included in the video. They've also got some negative prompts in here, which is great because this is how we also tell the AI video generator what we want to minimize, mitigate, not include in the video. So for example, when you saw all of the issues with AI hands being really deformed, what we can do is say no issues with humans hands, for example. For that video as well, they've included a timeline sequence. So for example, we've then got the first part here, and this is all around that start of the scene for having that box in the middle of the room. We've then called out in the sequence two that they wanted to explode with that puff of cardboard dust and that pop sound that they want to go with it. So a really clear, concise description. The next part here is that third part of the prompt. And what we're saying is they wanted to basically fly out all of the different furniture, the different elements that they want, so it can build up that picture in the room. It's also called out the audio that it wants with it to make sure that it's got it included in the output. Again, Google VO3 at the moment is the only one that can do both audio and visual to a really great level, but it is really expensive and we're gonna to touch on that a bit later. We can do sequence four here, and this is that last piece, just settling down the room and saying that we want everything to be in place. Another example is that Tesla ad that we saw a little bit earlier on. So as you can see here, the user really did put it into that JSON structure that they shared with the AI video model. Again, we've got a really clear description here of what they wanted to be included in that specific video. They've got the style that they wanted it in, as well as the camera. So really helping the AI understand the output we're trying to achieve and the lighting and the room temperature with the different settings as well. They then mention around the elements. And as you can see with the two brackets here, they've put it into an array. So we know it's got multiple items and the AI is able to understand that much easier just to say individually, this is how it works. The reason for this is because AI is working off keyword optimization, keywords that come through, because it breaks this up into tokens. It doesn't read it as a sentence like you or I. So for example, a really long sentence may not be as good as a much shorter sentence with keywords included. In the prompt, we also included around motion and the ending of the scene. We want no text involved, as well as some keywords to include. So that's how you can write some really great JSON prompts 
with AI video model. And in the link below, you'll get access to my resource in NA10 completely for free, which can go through and generate those prompts for you so that you can use them across lots of different platforms without having to do it from scratch every single time. Then let me show you what happens when you get creative with it. Here are three prompts I built and tested and the outputs that came from them. First up, we've got a Ferrari supercar launch in the LaFerrari style. It's able to go through and start from that box with the Ferrari logo, explode out into the office where maybe you'd go through and spec the car. And it's got a really good glossy paintwork with lots of light reflecting off the top as well. Again, it's not perfect, but this is incredibly good considering what we've paid for this versus having to get an entire team set up. And this is just the start. Next up, we've got one around a yacht unboxing. Next up, we're going to come into the fashion space. So we've got an example prompt here that we're using from Laura Piana, which is more of that high end fashion brand. Think about the, how soft the fabrics look, the dynamic lighting and that smoke that we've got at the start as well and the cinematic lighting. Each one of these used the JSON formatting but the style and output was completely different. So where and how do we actually run these prompts? Well, we've got two different options that we're gonna be able to show you today. We've got the ability to go with Google directly, or we've got third-party front-end platforms like Replicate that you can use instead. Now for Google, you've got two options. You're gonna be able to pay for the Gemini license. You are gonna to need to have the higher tier though, because this will give you access to the VO3 quality versus VO3 fast. And you're going to need quite a few credits to get that exact output that you want. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of videos around AI and automation. If you want to take your learning to the next level, make sure to check out our community. We've got lots of content in there that relates to AI image and AI video generation, as well as much more. The other one is using Google Vertex AI. And we're going to run through how you can use that now. And this is going to be more on a pay per request that you send through. But again, it's still going to be that 75 cents per second of output. So let's jump in and see an example. So Vertex AI is housed in Google Cloud. When you log in, set up an account, make sure you've got some billing information and you want to look for this media studio, which I'll include in the link below so you can find it nice and easily. This means we don't need that Gemini subscription. We're only going to need to pay for what we use. But if you are doing lots of requests, it will be cheaper to go through the main Gemini subscription, i.e. that $240 a month, because costs can rack up really quickly here with that 75 cents per second. You'll see on the right hand side, we can choose the different models. We can do the number of results that come back. You will be charged individually for these. So for example, each video that comes out is around eight seconds long. So you're going to be paying about $6 per output. So if you had the number of results at four, that will charge you $24 to get the output. We're going to come down though and choose 1080p one output. So we're going to see the results we get back. And we're going to put our prompt in here which is all around a cinematic gray titanium box exploding to give us a really good output. We're gonna send this off and wait for the results to come back. So now we've got our result back, let's check it out. As we can see here, the box open up. I think that looks incredibly good. I like the way that it folds away into the sand as well. I also really like the blue glow that we have right at the start to present it with the shoes for that sport brand in the environment. Overall, the quality of the image, I'd say is probably an eight out of 10, but let's compare what it looks like with replicate and multimodal for a reference image and text. In here, we can come down to video models and we're gonna be paying per second that we generate. So for example here, if I come down to VO3, we're still gonna be charged that $6 per output, but we can give it a starter image. 
So for example, here we can give it the prompt that we've just done in the previous example, and we can upload a starter image, which is just an example gray titanium box outside the Burj Khalifa. We can come to and do 1080p, and we can press run and then wait for that result to come back. So we've got our replicate result back. And as we can see here, I think that looks incredibly good for that reference to the starter image we provided. It's able to explode and show some of the shoes. I quite like the shiny surround that they provide as well. Some of the blue lines that come through with it. I think this is probably a seven or eight out of 10. The duplicate box, I'm not quite sure why it did that. It should have opened up the box instead. But I think overall with a couple of iterations, a couple of tries, you'll be able to get this to incredibly good levels without having to spend hundreds of thousands to get that team shipped out there, do all the filming on set and much, much more as well. But how good are the actual results that we get out every single time? Well, I ran the exact same prompt and got four different outputs. As we can see here on the screen, I'll go one by one to compare those results and give you my thoughts. So if we go through the first example, as we can see here in the background, really great Lego box that comes through. It gets slightly confused at the back just around how that should be styled. But overall, I think that looks incredibly good. And we could probably use this for an ad that was to come through. I especially like the little figures that we've got at the bottom right at the end. They give it that more personal touch as well. If we go through to the next example, this is again showing the variation. So with the exact same prompt, we're able to explode the model. We've now got it front facing instead. We've got the earth quite large in the background and it's still in that airlock environment. And I think this is probably gonna be an eight or nine out of 10. If we come through to this one here, the third example, and we give it a quick test. As we can see, when we explode the box, I think this one has one of the best boxes. We have it straight on for the profile. So it's quite hard to see the overall character, but I think it looks really good. I also like the doors on this one. I think they look like some of the best because it looks like really like that almost Star Wars airlock that you'd expect for this sort of scene. If we come to, to the last and final example, what we'll be able to see here is that box exploding right at the start. And we've got the landing gear down in this one. And as we can see here, the doors open at the back. So as you can see, you can get quite varied results with the four different examples. And that's why the costs can rack up quite quickly because you have to do quite a few iterations to get the output. So here's the key takeaways. The JSON prompting is gonna give you a really good structured output to try. The AI is still making creative decisions on the fly. So that consistency is not guaranteed. This is also really expensive compared to other video tools out there at the moment. So make sure that you're really needing the outputs or dedicating a good amount of budgets to get exactly what you want. So if you want cinematic results, you're gonna to need to give it a clear prompt, patience, and a bit of trial and error. Make sure to drop a comment around the brand or concept you'd love to see turned into a VO3 ad, and we can do it in the future. Stay tuned for more around AI automation and have a great day.